Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Traditional rulers who fought against colonialism in Nigeria. Before the British came to colonize the area which became known as Nigeria and set up their government, there were already several traditional rulers who ruled various tribes and people. They were respected and feared by their people. Their word was law and no one dared to challenge their authority. So you can imagine how insulted they must have felt when some white strangers came around with the intention of pushing them aside and taking over their lands. While some of these traditional leaders, probably having learnt that the British came with far more superior weapons of war, offered little resistance to the colonialists, others either had so much faith in the strength of their armies as well as their black powers and believed they could successfully defend their territories or were just too proud to let go without a fight even when they knew they would lose. Some of these traditional rulers, who chose to fight rather than surrender like cowards, in no particular order, are the following. Oba Ovonrawe Nogbaisi Ovonrawe Nogbaisi began his reign as king of the Great Benin Kingdom in 1888. He was born in around 1857. His father was Oba Adolo. The Benin Empire had been a wonderful one since the 17th century, its influence extending far and wide. Though its influence had begun to decline by the time Ovoramwen reigned, it still had considerable power and had monopoly over trade in the region. But the British did not like that fact and wanted to take over trade in the region, especially the palm oil rubber and ivory trades. Vice Consul James Robert Phillips and Captain Galway, who served as the British Vice Consul of Oil Rivers Protectorate, were already making plans for the takeover of the Benin Empire and making it a British protectorate. A British invasion force led by Phillips began a journey towards Benin with the intention to overthrow the Oba in 1896. Their weapons were hidden in their baggage while the troops were disguised as bearers. The plan was to meet the Oba by announcing a plan to negotiate. However, as they journeyed towards Benin, Oba of Unrawen sent messengers who issued several warnings that the party should not enter Benin as the king had ceremonial engagements and would be unable to meet Philips. But all warnings fell on deaf ears as the British party continued to advance. Before they arrived Benin, they were ambushed by Benin fighters and all but two were killed. Vice Consul Robert Phillips was among those killed. This resulted in a military operation against Benin in 1897. The operation was led by Harry Rawson. Though the Benin army put up a fight, they were defeated. The city was burned down and the royal palaces were looted. Oba Ovonrawen, though escaped on horse, returned to the city after six months with an entourage numbering over 700 on the 5th of August 1897 and formally surrendered. Ovonrawen was then exiled to Calabar with two of his wives, Queen Egbe and Queen Ahobahi. He died in exile in 1914. King Frederick William Koko King Frederick William Koko, better known as King Koko, was the ruler of the Nembe Kingdom in the Niger Delta area of southern Nigeria. He was born in 1853. Before he became king, he was a school teacher. He was chosen by leading Nembe chiefs to be king in 1889. Nembe people were engaged in trade with the Europeans who had settled in the coastal area. Palm oil was the major commodity of trade. The British had proposed a treaty which would give control of trade to the Royal Niger Company RNC, but Nembe rulers refused to sign it. That did not stop the company from preventing Nembe men from trade. 
denying them access to markets which they once enjoyed freely. As king, Koko tried to resist these pressures and formed alliances with the states of Boni and Okuma to strengthen his own base. He also renounced his Christianity and returned to his traditional religion. In January of 1895, Koko took a bold but reckless decision to attack the Royal Niger Company's headquarters at Akasa. Arriving Akasa on the 29th of January with 22 war canoes and 1,500 foot soldiers, he attacked the RNC depot, destroyed offices and industrial machines. They also killed 25 men, captured 70, including 32 white men as hostages. Koko gave a condition for the release of the hostages, being a return to free trading for his kingdom. When the British refused his demands, more than 40 of the hostages were then ceremoniously killed and eaten at a place called Sacrifice Island. On the 20th of February, the British Royal Navy retaliated with an attack and Nimbe was burned down with about 300 people killed. However, King Koko escaped to a remote village called Etiema. The British subsequently put out a 200-pound reward for the capture of Koko, but he was never caught as he died in Etiema in 1898, allegedly taking his own life. King Ogbidi Okoje Ogbidi Okoje was the Onoje that is king of Uromi, which is in present-day Edo State. He was born in 1857 and was a very stubborn opponent of British rule. As a traditional ruler, he believed it was his divine right to rule and this formed the basis of his resistance to the British colonialists. So, when the British colonial forces invaded Uromi in 1900, he fought vehemently, holding out for six months. However, he was betrayed by his younger brother, Iyahanebi. He consequently surrendered and was exiled to Calabar, where he met Ovoramwen, who was already in exile. But his exile was brief and he was released and sent back to Urumi, where he was restored to his throne. One would expect that Ogbidi Okoje would be more submissive on his return, but he continued his resistance to the British government, mostly with passive disobedience. His continued resistance once again led to his exile to Benin in 1918, then to Ibadan in 1924. Two years later, he escaped and returned to Urumi and was re-arrested and sent back to Ibadan. He was finally released in 1931 and returned to Urumi. He died in 1944 and his son, Prince Uwagbale Okoje, succeeded him as the Onoje of Uromi. Ogbidi Okoje had numerous children, born by his 60 wives and over 40 concubines. Some of his notable grandchildren include Anthony Enahoro, who proposed the motion for Nigeria's independence in the Western House of Assembly in 1953, and Cardinal Anthony Okoge, who was the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Lagos until 2012. Oba Kosoko Kosoko was Oba of Lagos from 1845 to 1851. He had successfully taken the throne away from his uncle Akitoye after defeating him in a battle and forcing him to flee Lagos. In November 1851, a British delegation approached Oba Kosoko seeking friendly relations and also urging him to stop the transatlantic slave trade which was bringing much wealth to the Oba. Kosoko was unwilling to give up the trade and rejected the proposal with the excuse that his kingdom was under the Oba of Benin and so he could not deal directly with foreign powers. On the 4th of December 1851, Kosoko attacked a British force, prompting Consul Beecroft to write to the Oba of Benin, stating that Kosoko had declared war on England. He said Kusoko had until the end of the month to surrender or else Lagos would be burned down. On the 26th of December 1851, in what is now known as the reduction of Lagos, Lagos was attacked by British warboats 
and in two days, the battle was over with Kosoko fleeing to Ijebu. Akitoye, who had British support, was reinstated as Oba. The new Oba subsequently abolished slave trade by signing a treaty on the 1st of January, 1852. Much later, in 1861, Kosoko was allowed to return to Lagos and was given the title Oloja of Ereko. He died in 1872. Omoba Jide Kosoko, a prominent Nollywood actor and Adekunle Gold, a top Nigerian musician, are descendants of Oba Kosoko. Muhammadu Atahiru I Muhammadu Atahiru I was the 12th and last independent sultan of the Sokoto Caliphate before it was taken over by the British. His reign was brief from October 1902 until March 15, 1903. The Sokoto Caliphate had been founded by Atahiru's ancestor, Usman Danfodio, in the early 19th century. Before Atahiru's reign, the British had already begun encroaching on the vast caliphate, and some part of it had come under their rule. In 1903, the British decided it was time to strike the heart of the caliphate. A British force led by General Lugard marched against the city of Sokoto to occupy it. Atahiru quickly organized his army and went out to meet the British force outside the city. The battle did not last long as the British with their superior firearms quickly defeated Atahiru's forces. Atahiru I fled along with many of his followers. He continued to draw supporters from rural regions of the caliphate and his forces soon grew to thousands. They continued their march through Zamfara and Kano with the British in pursuit. Finally, in 1903, in the Battle of Bromi near present-day Gombe, Atahiru I was killed. His son, Muhammad Belo bin Atahiru, became the leader and he led the survivors all the way to Sudan where they eventually settled. Their descendants still live there today. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.